Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you a simple script that records mouse clicks and plays it back using hotkeys. This script uses arrays and therefore I'm going to also show you what an array is and how to make use of it if you're not aware of what arrays are. If you're interested in this video, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. So first of all, I'm going to go through what an array is and how to make use of it. So if you're already aware of what an array is, please skip to the timestamp showing up in the bottom of the video now. All right, let's open up our web browser and look for what is an array in programming. It'll give us the definition of what an array is. And it says an array is a data structure consisting of a collection of elements. Right, and we can also search for array in AutoHotKey, and there's going to be an official documentation for what an array is. There appears to be two types of arrays within AutoHotKey: object-based arrays and pseudo arrays, not recommended for use. Now, within object-based arrays, there appears to be two types of arrays. You've got associative arrays, which I'm not going to go into. It basically refers to objects, which are uh, a pair of key and value. Simple arrays are the arrays that we're going to use today. So I'll show you how you how you can create them and make use of them. All right. I'm just gonna go to this um, spare script and I will call x underscore pos as the name of my array and use expression assignment and open brackets and close brackets and that's how you initialize an array that means you're going to use this variable name as an array now now you don't must initialize a variable as an array but why not you can do it too now if you want to add elements within the array as you create the array what you can do is you open and close brackets and put the elements within these brackets separated by comma. So I'm just going to put in some random numbers, 5, 4, 3, 2, and these are going to be stored as numbers. And if you want to put in a random string, you can wrap the string within quotation marks like that. If you want to access the value within the array, what you can do is you can specify the position of the element within the array. So the first element will have a position of one, second will have two, third will have three, and fourth will have four, and so on and so forth. So if I want to access, for, for example, the value within the fourth position element, and then I can put number four in, in my uh, brackets here and if I save this and run it I'll get the value that is in the, stored in the fourth position within the array okay so if you want to add a value to um, the existing array what you can do is you can do what's called a push and push is going to add what you put in within the parentheses, for, for example, 50. I'm just going to put in a random number 50. Now, when you run this command, it's going to push the value of 50 to the last position within the array, like that. So, if I do a message box of X and pause, right now when I create the array, it will have a total of five elements and this command will push another element of 50 to the back of to the last position of the array uh, which is going to be a new position of the array which is going to be the sixth position so if i try to call that that element by using the message box if i save it and run it i'll get number 50 which is in the sixth position within that array now you can also get the length of the array which is how many elements are in the array so and you can do that by by um, doing this command and if i save it and run it i'll get a number of six which represents the number of elements within my array now uh, just for demonstration purposes if you want to create a associative array which contains 
an, um, objects as elements you can do it in such manner so you can you have to have a key and a, a value pair and you can also have multiple keys like this and multiple values like that and you use the curly braces to um, open and close the array like that but uh, in my script that I'm going to show you in a bit it doesn't use the associative array it uses a simple array and it will use all these functions that I've shown you so far now that's out of the way let's jump into our script it's a very simple and short script so it won't take too long to explain so basically when the script runs what it's going to do is first of all it's going to set the chord mode mouse to screen so it starts from uh, top left hand corner in terms of the x and y coordinates that you provide and it will initialize the x pass array and y pass away array which i'm going to use to store the x position and y position y coordinates um, within in order to play it back after the recording of the clicks is finished and then it uses the control left button as a hotkey to get the position of the mouse cursor and stores it into temp x and temp y variables which are going to be pushed into the x pause array and y pause array and that's going to stop there so as long as the script is running these variables will be stored in the arrays now the next time you run the hotkey again it's going to get the current position of the cursor which which is going to be different to the position of the cursor when the hotkey was run the last time and those those x and y coordinates will be pushed into our arrays now the r hotkey is then going to replay after you finished recording all the clicks is going to replay the clicks by doing a loop a loop by the length of the x position array which is going to equal the y position array because every time we run the left button hotkey it will create both it will push both x and y coordinate to our x pause and y pause arrays it's going to loop by the number of elements or the number of coordinates stored in the x pause array and then it's going to perform a mouse click a left mouse click and a single mouse click and with a speed of 5 add coordinates that are updated each time the iteration within the loop is run so the first iteration will have an a index of 1 which is going to be x pause 1 which represents the first element or the coordinate that is saved in the x pause array and then the y pause a index is going to be y pause 1 so that's going to be the first coordinate save in the y uh, pause array and then the next iterate with the next iteration within the loop will access the second um, coordinate saved in the x pause array and y pause array and so on and so forth so in that manner you are able to loop through all the coordinates saved in the arrays and perform the left clicks on the coordinates that you have saved within the arrays all right so let me show you how this would work in reality so let me go ahead and run the script and open up paint so i have paint open up right here i'm just gonna resize it and make it sit always on top now while I'm on paint, if I press control and left mouse button, I'm going to start drawing dots like this, which are drawn when I press the left mouse button. And I'm going to select other colors as well, for example, red, and the left mouse button that I have sent to the color pa palette will also be recorded in my array. So when I replay this, coordinates or the script it's going to change the color of the brush automatically as well so i'm done i'm done recording so i'm just going to select everything and delete change the brush color back to black and switch to brush and if i go ahead and run the the r hockey 
it's going to send the dots like that just as I did it before changing the brush color to different colors all right so this is it for this script demo at the moment the script is not going to be all that much of a practical use but in the next script demo I'm going to be showing you something slightly more useful than this thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video